All right, so we got the hydraulic cylinder in the vise there. And um, I've already taken the three-foot pipe wrench and busted the gland loose. For some reason, these ones are not very tight. Um, you can bust them loose with that pipe wrench rather easy than... These are just channel lock 460s, I think. Probably is the size of them, whatever. Yeah, they're probably 460s. But they just spin right out. And when I did the stick cylinder, it was the same way. I thought it was going to be real tight, and it just went boop, and it went... Um, so once we get this spun out here, the stick cylinder just had a nut or a bolt on the back side of the rod holding the piston on. You gotta spin that loose. And I'll show you everything that goes on inside of there and what the seals do. You'd think that they are all oh they're all in there for sealing. Well they are but some of them have other jobs as well. Waiting for a big gush of oil. And that's going to come out of here. Well, up there, I mean. I don't know if we're out of thread yet or what. You think it'd be getting close. It almost feels like we're just turning it over now.
There it goes. Made a bit of a mess. That's to be expected. That's why we did it in here on the concrete. Where it can be cleaned up and not outside on the dirt. We'll find a rag here. <laughs> All right, so now that we have this apart, I'd like to show you. This is the piston here. This is a kind of a uh, cushion valve. And as that rod extends out, that oil goes up into there. And using these holes, it goes over top of that. And that creates turbulence to somehow make a like a hydraulic buffer of turbulated oil as to what I understand so that it doesn't just slam on that because if you kept doing that under you know with your machine under power with you know full power and a load on the bucket you'd eventually rip your rod your threads right off or you pull your nuts or anything like that or stretch the rod and your piston would come loose and as you can see that piston is nice and tight still so that is how that works so this is your main seal that actually seals the piston to keep the oil on this side and keep the oil on this side these seals are what keep the oil from blowing out externally past the gland and then there's seals on the inside as well then there's also another backup ring right there that that just kind of keeps the oil or it keeps the threads and the debris out same as this wiper seal up up inside of here so well let's go ahead and uh, take that car key out and zing that nut off it's got a little bit of a buff a spot right there that needs buffed out but I can hardly catch it with my fingernail so you're fine you just buff that out and away you go All right, so here we have the the right tool for the job, inch and five eighths. I don't remember it being that tight on that stick cylinder. We might just be able to get lucky. Yeah, A thousand little hits will equal one big one eventually. And then you just go ahead and unthread your uh, castle nut here. Which not all 
not all these are going to be the same. Some have two spanner nuts. Some have a big nut with a jam nut in it. It's hard to say what you're going to get. Some just have a bolt. This one here has a has a big nut. Now these are neat because they come apart like that. Like an old case cylinder. So you don't have to heat this one up. You just press that on. Normally if these don't come apart like this, you have to heat this up in oil. And expand it. Wrap it on there. Then wrap a piston ring compressor on it. That's how I do it. To get yourself a piston that's usable again. There's your cushion valve make sure your piston don't slide off there. This is all going to go back in the same direction too. Don't forget that. And let's see why this thing is leaking. I don't know if you can see that. Let me get behind here and look down in there. You can see right there that there's chunks that's missing. You see the the seal down in there. I wish the lighting was better. It's just blowed out there. That's supposed to be a piece of the seal. Just dry rotted. But we'll get new seals. We'll put that thing back together. Um, hopefully that's all that we need to do. We'll get the new seals outside of here. problem is it's trying to get that down in there and clean that out. Would be nice to try to get that out in one gigantic chunk to give to the guy who makes the seals or buy after finds the aftermarket seals. You don't want to go wild digging in there because there's a bushing that presses in that actually keeps the, the cylinder, you know, from rocking as it travels up and down. So you don't want to gouge it. You'll get streaking in here, then that streaking will then in turn go after your, your rubber seals that you just installed. But that'd be why that cylinder is leaking so bad right there. She's a total goner. But she's rebuildable. Yep. Rebuildable, no doubt. Gotta get all that junk out of there. That screwdriver fits that groove just right. I don't know what to try to do about this one down in here. Might have to put it in the vise and go after it here. Or I won't just annihilate it. But I think the annihilation is already underway. But I at least wanted to show you how to tear apart a hydraulic cylinder of the day. So. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for staying subscribed. We do have some uh, some stuff coming up that you guys are going to want to see. We'll be back on the 7.3 Power Stroke or the 7.3 IDI. Um, pretty soon here, once I can get down to the junkyard and pick up the rest of the stuff I need for it. 
Until then, see you all next time.